since we've got you here at Post 9 and we've had a, a somewhat volatile market, I did want to ask you a couple of quick questions. I mean, what do you think? Do you ever see, ever think you'd see 0.99 in front of the 10? No. Um, I mean, it, it, uh, it, you know, we're, we're violating the laws, you know, of, of finance continually. What continually. What does that mean? Um, I don't know. We, we um, have gone to the longest duration asset in the and priced it as if it's always going to be this way. And it's been going on for five or ten years. So it's kind of the death of value investing to a certain extent because the world becomes kind of value, valuation agnostic. Um, and once you kind of lose your connection to intrinsic value, and what is intrinsic value if terminal value is discounted back at 1%, right? Right. Once you lose that, though, you kind of, as a value investor with, an old, with a bunch of baggage, you kind of lose your bearings. So fortunately, I've moved into a world that's got a different lens and a different purpose, and I get to hang out with guys like this that are changing the world. Right, but when you put your value investor hat back on, I yeah. guess you feel as though you're in a world you don't understand? I mean... Or can't operate in any longer. And by the way, you're not alone in that. So I mean, look, talk look, to any of the big value investors, yeah. they all feel somewhat dislocated. Uh, you know, I was buying BP yesterday or two days ago at 30 bucks a share, three times EBITDA. And I'm like, this is ridiculous. You know, it's really hard to get off oil. And the company's done a great job in the last three years financially. The balance sheet's fine. Um, the, you know, they can be part of the, of the solution. They can move uh, to carbon capture and hydrogen and other things with their capital spend to become a company of the future. But I'm sitting there saying, you know, who, what fundamental, usually I could buy a stock at below intrinsic value and sell it to somebody at intrinsic value, and that's my business. Like, who am I going to sell BP to? Really? Is it the, you know, maybe there's a computer that kicks in and wants to buy oil at some point, but is there really enough people on the other side saying, oh, you know, BP's now five times EBITDA, I want to buy it? I mean, I don't, I'm not sure. Well, you, know? when you bought it though, you must think there's still a yeah, chance. Yeah, I mean, I, this is my point. I'm just, I'm, I'm trying, I'm staying, I'm just following my, my true colors, which is intrinsic value you know, valuation driven. Yeah. And I we'll think see. you can help transform those companies too to, the, to, to clean energy, which is I think yeah. is what like BP is trying to do. And I think they'll be able to rebrand themselves. And that's yeah. why we, you know, we, we ultimately went from, the SPAC was, the SPAC is VTIQ is the, is the symbol on the, on the, the SPAC they will be converted over to Nikola, NKLA. Um, and these companies like, like BP and others have seen it and they said, look, if we don't change what we're doing right now, we're, we're not going to get that long, that yeah. long retail value anymore. Right. So they're changing. They're, I mean, they these are, companies but are, are they changing fast enough? I mean, you run an ESG fund. You were early, this, and you're buying BP. Uh, I mean, granted, they may change over time, my goal, but they still take stuff out of the ground and cause an awful lot of <laughs> carbon to go into the atmosphere as a result. Yeah, to, but 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 they are part of the solution. We can't get off oil fast enough to. Uh, um, to you know, it's it's brought whole populations out of poverty. It's allowed for globalization, you know, which is, which is create a lot of value, to be honest. So it, it is in the plumbing. And they do have the, they have the infrastructure, they have the geologists, they know where the aquifers are, they have the project management, they have the workforce. They, they can move to the, to the cleaner solution. So do you ever get to a point where you move them to get there? I mean, I'm somewhat surprised to hear you would... I understand three times EBITDA is very yes. alluring for a long-time value yeah. investor, but you run an it, ESG fund. When a thing, when something, it's, it's, it's not that different than the core business that I ran for 20 years, that, um, which is the stock price creates the impetus for change. And when your stock price gets that low, your existing strategy probably isn't working. And my job as an activist investor in the environmental and social world is to go find them, not to find the new CEO like I did in my old business, that's what we focused on. Do they hit margin metrics, blah, blah, blah. My, my new activist hat says, let's go find the right investors, right? Let's go, because right now our investors are wrong. They, they, they want us to buy back stock and we're an energy intensive, a capital intensive energy company. Why would we do that? Well, let's just, but let's be part of the solution, reallocate our capital. And that's a role that I want to play with a courageous CEO who wants to, you know, who wants to move and do something different. Right. Um, and finally, Jeff, just the market itself right now. Does it worry you at all? The equity markets, where we are, the I'm buying. You know, you I, buy, I buy on, on, on weeks like this for sure. 
just because long term. Three times EBITDA. I know, but you just said there may not be anybody to sell it to. <laughs> I know. Nobody wants to buy these things. Trevor said it. We need, I mean, to, make, we need to make it. We need to make it more investable. That's all, and we can. You can yeah. even a even a oil company. Yes. A BP can yes. make it investable. Yeah, yes. they've got to transform their brand completely, and I think these guys are realizing it. It, it if they don't change everything fundamentally, they're going to die. And that's, I think that's the most important thing. You've got to say, look, everything we're doing is, is destroying what's going on around the world. And people don't want to invest in this anymore. And if they don't change their brand, change the, if, they can't, if they don't go make those huge pushes into hydrogen, electrification, they're done. That's it. But they're when out. you trade its cents on the liquidation value, which is essentially, I mean, oil probably has a 40-year life. Really? Because what we're doing, I mean, we'll have 700 stations on the road by 2030. Yeah. That's we'll 10 be, years well, away, right? The crazy thing is we'll be the largest ener energy consumer in the world in seven years. The largest because of how much energy our hydrogen consumes. So Nikola will have the ability to, to affect the energy consumption around the world better than almost anyone. That's for people like, look, we don't do anything with BP right now. I mean, they're a great company. There might be something there down the road that we could, we could work on together. And we, we're trying to push all these oil companies to change. And it's not just them, it's everyone. But we need people to help us. When you're, burnt, when you're consuming that much energy, you, you need people that already have infrastructure, have knowledge, have the people, have everything, and, and we need those people to help us succeed as well.